Well, hi there, guys. How are we luck? <laughs> I think my old, my work coat shrunk. Anyways, uh, BTHV1 here. Bruce the Handyman version 1 because the Handyman never does the same thing twice. And I am working on the Goldilocks rototillers. Uh, you saw them in uh, my first video in the series of repairing three rototillers. So anyway, I'm just going to show you something about this 5 horsepower rototiller. I'll try not to shake too much. Okay, here is my 5 horse rototiller. When I got it last fall, uh, it was seized. I couldn't. I pulled the rope as hard as I could, and nothing would, nothing would uh, move. So I squirted a bunch of oil down the cylinder, which would be the head here. That goes on there just like that, and I squirted a bunch of oil down that hole, and I tapped with a drift inside the hole to get the piston to go down, and it went down a tiny, tiny bit. But I did manage to catch the edge of this uh, valve. Uh, intake valve, but that's okay. So today I took I took a uh, excuse me a large drift and I just tapped it on the on the flywheel lightly, although that's a heck of a big drift, and I got the engine to move about a half an inch. So I did it again, lightly, 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 and I got the whole thing to rotate completely once. And I put a whole bunch more oil down the cylinder. And uh, as you saw in the uh, three horse rebuild, the ratchet lets you go one way. And now we are, the, it's quite stiff still, but as I use it, we'll go back a little bit. We are getting more and more movement on, on the system. So I'm just going to go around a few times. It's getting better and better all the time. Now, these two valves sit right underneath the head. This is engines 101. These, this head will sit on top of there. The gas comes up through the tank, through the carburetor, and it gets misted just like a spray bottle. And it gets, the uh, now you just see that, the intake valve opens, it's opening now. As the piston goes down and sucks the uh, misted gas and air into the cylinder. The piston continues to travel down. And at the bottom of the travel now, the intake valve closes. And now we're compressing the gas right at the top. Now you'll notice, I want to do this all at once. There's a magnet in this aluminum piece here that's going around. And it'll reach the coil at the very same time that the piston comes to the top. And now the magnets have lined up with the coil. The High tension lead is connected to the spark plug, which is in the which is in the head hole, and bang, we get our explosion, which drives the piston down. And now the piston's coming back up, opening the other valve. So the gases come through here, down the valve, and out through whoops, and out through the exhaust valve and completion. So there we have it. Intake. Suction in, valve up, compression, and we're at the top dead center they call that, and boom, the piston goes flying down, both valves are closed, and now when the, when the uh, piston's coming back up, the gases are expelled out the exhaust valve. So isn't that cool? And the most coolest part of this video is that this engine is not seized. I thought it was. So now I'm just going to put some oil into this crankcase. I don't know how much is in there. I have no idea what's going to happen. And uh, I'm going to put the head back on. And we're going to see if we can get this thing to fire.
So BTH V1 over and out. Sorry for all the shakiness. Hey guys, BTH V1 here. I just took the uh, rewind clutch off this five horse motor and if you saw my uh, rebuild of the uh, three horsepower 1961 rotofiller, the three horsepower one, it only had one cog on the clutch. And this one has one, two, three, four, five cogs with six ball bearings. So you can see how much more efficient it is as, as it turns and engages the, the small ball bearings. So anyway, that's it. And then the, the two piece, this is a two piece cover. This just fits over here. I've cleaned everything up and I've put, there's a piece of felt right inside here. And you put a few drops of oil so that felt continues to oil the shaft. So anyway, that's it. Just thought I'd show you a modern clutch. Hello folks, I'm back. Well, here we have our uh, 1961 clutch. And I can tell that it's a really, really old one because normally there's two pieces of metal that go together to hold this clutch in here. But this one has a, uh, a clip, a huge clip, and uh, it just pops out with a screwdriver like that. I've seen one of these before. And there we go. Now inside here is going to be some ball bearings that catch on, a, on some cogs as it rotates. The ball bearings catch and it, and it turns. So I will take the lid off now and we'll see what we've got in here. Oh, well look at that. There's four ball bearings in there with a little bit of grease and there's only one cog. Now the, the modern ones have four or five cogs that catch the ball bearings as it goes around and it ratches only in one direction. Hey Jubbers, excellent luck with the five horsepower. Sorry for the noise, my furnace is running. I got all the doors open. But uh, I put the head back on after you saw the head off with the piston going up and down. And uh, I had to prime it quite a bit and it fired. So I put two or three inches of gas in the tank and uh, see if she goes. I, I had to start it started once. I'm pretty excited. So that doesn't mean the work is done, but that means that uh, everything's going up and down and round and round. So excellent news. So now that I've got all three rotor tillers running, and uh, I'll finish tuning up this one. And then I have to deal with the small issues like the tail on the, uh, on the three horsepower and the handlebars on the eight horsepower. But this one's going to have the least amount of chassis work. So that's great. I've got all three of them running and uh, I don't think I spent 12 bucks. It's fantastic. Calculator.